So, hello Kim. Hello Anya. <laughs> Please, tell me what awakening is for you. What awakening is? Um, yeah, uh, for me I would say it's, um, yeah, it's coming home to myself. And when I went through my awakening for a long time, I didn't know that's what it was. I was just in a state of seeking, seeking answers, of uh, trying to understand who I am, why I'm here in this life, you know, what, what God is. So I had all these questions and I was searching and yeah, trying to find something, but I didn't know what I was searching for. <laughs> now I know, I, I was searching for me. As a child I was very sensitive. I still am, <laughs> but as a child um, it was difficult. For me I felt um, people's emotions. I, um, when they said something and they thought something different, I felt that I was very confused. <laughs> Why do they say one thing but they they feel something different. So I saw layers and I saw, um, you know, into people's souls and I thought everybody did. Everybody was sensitive. But then I understood that no, not, <laughs> not everybody's so sensitive. Um, and yeah, as I shared for a long time, I felt, especially in my teenage years, I felt like an outsider. So. Like I didn't, felt like I didn't fit in into this world. I felt like I couldn't really connect with my family, although I loved them very deeply and they loved me. And but still, it was like they didn't see who I am, and it was very painful for me that my own parents can't see all of who I am, and it brought very deep uh, sadness to me and depression. So I went through. Um, a phase of depression uh, as a teenager and into my young adulthood um, and at the same time I was asking these questions um, I felt a strong connection to God and to Yeshua to Jesus but then I saw the Bible and I'm like what's what's this bullshit it's I don't I couldn't um, I had a spiritual crisis because I felt this connection, yet um, I didn't resonate with the way how the church was um, teaching these materials. And I felt like, okay, I need to know, I need to know who God is, I need to know what my relationship with God is. And so when I was 16, I was spending a lot of time um, meditating, you know, feeling, um, asking these questions, looking it within. Um, and that's how it, mm, my awakening started. And then slowly I discovered the New Age scene, I discovered there are other people who are spiritual but not religious necessarily. So I started to read books, to go to different spiritual workshops, to teachers. And at first it was wonderful to see, oh, other people are asking these same questions. Um, but I was never really satisfied, you know, with the teachers that I met or the books. Um, I felt like, okay, there's a little bit of truth in there, but I didn't really resonate with most of them. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and then a lot of my Awakening has been through relationships. So when I um, was about 19, I started my first real romantic relationship, and it was with another, with a man who was also in the New Age scene. And I felt a very, very deep connection with him, a very strong connection. And I thought, okay, he's. He is the other half of my soul, like he is the person who will complete me. So I just, I fell deeply in love 
It was very intense and we started a relationship. Um, but um, he had also a um, difficult childhood and um, some imbalances and he started to become violent. So, um, yeah, so it was for a while we lived together and it was a very um, unhealthy dynamic with a lot of uh, physical violence. And um, I kind of very naively thought, okay, I will just love him and heal him and whatever, you know, he will change his ways, you know, I'm, I'm so full of love, I will just, you know, change this man. And uh, it didn't work that way. <laughs> it, really? No. <laughs> There was a moment when, um, in one of those violent episodes, where I was very close to dying. I, I lost my consciousness, and and a few things happened. I had this uh, experience of um, cosmic consciousness, where I was merging with my divinity. So, uh, my, as my human, I was unconscious in the moment, but I, for a moment, I had this experience of being completely one with, with God. Yeah. So it, it didn't last long, but then I shifted into this um, state where I, I had to make a choice if I want to leave the body and die uh, or to return back. Um, and it felt like weeks or months of, you know, meditating and I was having long conversations with my soul and with the soul of this man who was my boyfriend then and it felt like a very long experience but when I, I chose to come back to continue my life and um, Apparently, I'd only been gone for a few minutes, <laughs> but um, yeah, so when I came back, then I decided that I need to end the relationship because I chose to live. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I left the relationship and then I really had to start my healing and integration journey. I had been so much looking for love outside of me from from this man from anywhere <laughs> such a deep need to to receive love um, so then I really that's when my healing journey began and I was in a very very dark place I felt I was almost constantly in a deep state of fear I was afraid of being alive I was afraid of violence. I was afraid of humans, of my own emotions. It was just, yeah, it was pure hell. It, it was a very, yeah, it was a dark time and um, two years after, um, after that experience I um, I found the Crimson Circle and it was a big relief to me because suddenly I could put words to what I was experiencing. I could understand, oh, this is awakening that I'm going through. I learned about these abusive dynamics that happen and how we create them. Um, and I started to understand about aspects, how we all have so many aspects within us uh, and how they play out through, you know, in, in our relationships through other people. So I had this, this one dream where um, I came face to face with, with darkness. It was in the, it was the face of a woman 
very terrifying. She was like the embodiment of darkness. And I've never been so terrified of anything. And I was in that moment in the dream. But somehow I knew in the dream that it's me, it's an aspect of myself. And in the dream, I, I said to this, this woman, this face, that I see you. You're, you're my darkness. You're an aspect of me. And it was a very big shift for me, a, like a turning point to, to recognize that this darkness is not outside of me, but it's, it's an aspect of me. Um, so even uh, those experiences that I had of abuse, it wasn't, it was really like the, my then boyfriend was like a mirror to me. And, but what I was seeing was my own darkness reflected back to me. And suddenly I understood, oh, I'm not afraid of other people. I'm not afraid of, you know, this physical world with all its, drama and wars and everything. I'm afraid of my own darkness. And that was a big turning point. Then I could really understand, you know, what integration is, what healing is. For me, one of the biggest things was to learn how to just do conscious breathing just to um, breathe and allow whatever is there to be there, to flow through me. So how, when there is a dark aspect to, to see it, to acknowledge it and just breathe. And through this breathing, I was able to slowly find my safe space to find this um, this feeling of um, my connection to my soul it feels like um, like home you know like I'm at peace and first it was just short glimpses of it you know most of the time being in fear and anxiety and then short glimpses of, of feeling this peacefulness this inner safety so little by little this um, expanded. I was able to stay longer in my safe space. And the, the waves of darkness, the waves of emotion were a bit shorter. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think fear was one of the biggest challenges for me to um, yeah, at first it felt very overwhelming, but then I slowly learned, oh, it's, it's just an aspect, like it's, actually there is nothing to, to fear because you're, you can always, you always have access to your safe space. And it took me some, it took me a few years to really feel that. And there were years when I was just crying, you know, every day, just, just releasing stuck energy. Um, yeah, years. And it made me feel crazy because it's like, how can it take so long to, to release? Um, yeah, but it's doesn't matter in the end how, how long it takes. I thought that, you know, love is, means needing someone. It means attachment. It means like desire. Um, so as I've gone through my healing journey and especially in my last relationship, it was with a conscious man and so for the first time, I experienced what love really is, unconditional love. 
and that it's not it doesn't mean that you need someone it um there can be desire but it's that's not the essence of it it's just it's very open it's so open and so unconditional so for the first time i was able to receive that and to also feel that towards uh, a man this unconditional love and it was very confusing i mean it it took at first i was still um playing these old dynamics you know um like um trying to have rules in the relationship or or thinking that we need to talk about emotions so i'm a psychologist I'm, <laughs> for me it's very normal to talk about emotions and my partner didn't feel the need he just didn't want he felt like if you talk about emotions you can get very stuck in the mental stories which uh, can be true but he never talked about his emotions it was a big problem for me i didn't understand yet that oh you can sometimes just communicate through feeling another person's presence and that's that's communication you know you don't you don't always need so many words um, so that was a uh, took some time to understand that um, yeah and also to understand that I'm responsible for my emotions. My emotions have nothing to do with what my partner does or doesn't do. Uh, his emotions have nothing to do with me. That was a, a big shift. And um, yeah, uh, but I, I ended the relationship because I noticed in myself still this um, feeling that I need his love, that I need his presence to to be connected to my soul or my safe space and and I knew no I, I need to be free I need to find this in a sovereign way you know not not through a man even even though it's so beautiful but still um, I want to find it I want to be complete so um, yeah so we ended the relationship and I think that was my last um, kind of really dark integration period then, the loneliness after that, to, to learn how to, um, yeah, to feel that love within me uh, without a mirror. And, um, and right now I've, I've, I feel complete. Yeah, it's it's beautiful to to have experiences with other humans, and I'm I'm open. Maybe it will happen, but it's like I'm pe at peace um, by myself. Yeah, and the emotions are emotions are very different. I think emotions were always my biggest challenge, and now it's like I don't take emotions personally it's like the they feel like the weather you know it's something that just flows through me for me new energy means um, stepping out of duality and uh, okay it sounds a bit cliche a lot of teachers talk about um, going beyond duality but um you know, we live in a society, in a culture, which is dualistic. There's always polarity. There's good and bad and right and wrong and positive emotions and negative emotions. And so to step out of that duality, it's kind of, it's a bit of an all or nothing thing. You know, you can, you're either in duality or you, you're in new energy and so when you step out of duality it means like you don't resist uh, experiences or 
emotions and uh, even emotions that are uncomfortable or like anger or, or sadness you know it's but okay I just I open up I open up I breathe I allow and so you're not in constantly battling and constantly you know in resistance to parts of yourself or um, or sometimes there's stressful thoughts so okay they can just be there but you not, don't have to try to manage and control and you, you know so there's it's like living without resistance to whatever is there um, and also I feel a big part of new energy is um, yeah going beyond power games and and that happens very naturally when you take responsibility for everything for your creations so um so what I mean is that I before I thought you know reality is this objective thing you know and I need to figure out how to navigate reality and it just um, it just happens to me and so um, okay so then slowly I understood no it's me I'm, I'm creating my reality um, so there's no there's no power things it's not you know me against someone else it's, it's my thing it's my creation so that means I can um, wake up in the morning and say oh it's a beautiful day and then it's a beautiful day or I can wake up in the morning and say oh, it's gonna be such a busy and stressful day <laughs> and then it's such a busy and stressful day and and so at first that's very scary because you're whoa I don't want that kind of responsibility that's <laughs> I need to take responsibility for everything in my life in my experience I didn't like that I didn't like this <laughs> it took me you know I was resisting this new perspective for a long time but then okay and at some point it was maybe I like this freedom <laughs> Maybe it's okay to be, to be free and choose, choose my reality and so, um, yeah, so in new energy there is no, um, there's no battles because it's, you realize it's just, it's you, it's, it's your creation, so okay you can battle with yourself but why <laughs> you know why not just why not just be at peace with different parts of you and yeah advice yeah um, i would say yeah be gentle with yourself and open up and it's sounds like the craziest thing you don't want to open up to darkness but open up because the more you open up the more you will be able to also receive your divinity